Jeff Gibbons here with another Machine Basics tutorial. So in this video, I'll be showing you the basics of sampling. So let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is find a sound. And you can do that with the browser. I'm going to work on group C here because I've already got a kit and a base on groups A and B. Well, let's go to the browser and I'm going to look for one shot. So I'm going to go right here where it says drums. I'm going to change this subcategory to brass. So there we go. We get to the brass. So I'm going to scroll down in the software here way to the bottom because I found one earlier that works really well for this demo. Uh, it's this Nako loop right here. So I'm just going to click on that one. So I'm going to double click on it to load it onto sound one on this group. If you're ever in the browser and you want to get away from the browser, just hit the plug in button. So you can see right away I'm on the sound, which is exactly where I want to be. And I can see also that this is a sampler. Sometimes when you bring in audio, it will make it as an audio module. In this case, we don't want it as an audio module. An audio module plays audio files back when you press play on machine and does some other things. It's great for certain situations, but in this case, we want to deal with a sampler. Make sure you're clicked on this audio module itself, click the 4D encoder, and then scroll down to sampler and hit load. So just in case you ever see it loaded up improperly as an audio module when you want to be in the sampler. Also, don't forget that that's a great way to take any of these audio modules that come with some of these expansion packs and turn them into something that you can slice up in the sampler and then load onto the pads and play with the pads, which is how I like to work most of the time. So it's a sampler now. And the next thing I do when I on the sound here is I just click sampling. So now that I am in the sampling editor, I can go in here and I can start making some changes. So you'll see up at the top, we've got record. So that's where we could record our own samples. And edit is where you can do all sorts of functions to this chunk in its entirety. So I can go through and see all of these different options like truncate, I can shorten it and normalize. I can make it make the audio go all the way to the top without clipping. I can reverse this sample. So let's just hear that. So I can do a fade in and the fade in will happen on this entire loop. So if I hit apply, we'll see everything gets a fade in all the way up to that point right there. Let me undo this. And if you ever want to do a fade in on just one little section, actually let's undo the reverse as well. There we go. So if you ever want to do a fade in on something, hit apply. You'll see that it's fading in this entire file. But maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want this fade in to only be on this first little chunk or something like that. So what you can do is you can arrow to the second page. These arrow buttons are, are always really important. Whenever you see that you have at least two pages or more than one page on any window in machine. So if I click the arrow button to the right, you see that it goes from play range to selection range. And watch what I can do here. I can change my selection for a fade in to only take place right at the beginning right here, something like this. I hit apply and now the fade in only happens at the front chunk of this little piece of audio. If I hit undo, I can make the fade in even finer if I zoom in. So watch what I can do. I can zoom in with this knob right here and then slide over with this knob left or right. So I go over to the left and I zoom in even more. And you can see that maybe I want to do a fade in with some noise right here or something like that. So I can take my selection range and I can make it even smaller. So let's go way in right here and let's make my selection range just right here. And I do a fade in and now it does a tiny fade in at the very beginning of this file. Okay, so this is how you can go in and choose ranges to apply these kind of edits. Uh, let's zoom way back out to the whole thing here. And now let's apply a fade out just on this last chunk of the audio. So I take my selection range again. I'm going to take it all the way to the end of the file and then move my selection range maybe to something like this and do a fade out. Hit apply. Now we have a fade out just on that last chunk. So don't forget, if you don't change the selection range and it's the whole thing and you press fade out, it's going to do a fade out on the entire file. So that's not super helpful uh, in most situations. Okay, let's undo this. 
Other things we can do to the audio, we've got fixed DC offset. So don't worry too much about that one, but it's whenever the audio has shifted slightly off kilter. Silence, we've got silence, so you could go in and silence just a section. So we could do that with the selection range. I could go in and silence just one little chunk. Now that is silenced. Oh, I did that with the play range. And did you notice how when I click the button, it's just going to play from that chunk? So that's the other reason I like this selection range. So what, let me undo that. You can make these changes with the play range, but watch what happens if I leave the play range on the outside, and then I scroll over to the selection range and then do the same thing, and then hit silence. Now I'm playing, I'm going to play, when I press play on the pad, it's going to play from the beginning. So selection range is just a really nice way to hone in on one spot, but still allow you to play the entire sample from the pad. All right, so let's undo that and go over to the other ones. We've got cut here. Let's just pretend actually for a second that you just want to get rid of one of these notes. I can go in, make my selection range right between these two points. I can hit cut and it's going to actually pull the other audio to the left so it removes this chunk. Hit apply. So now we have just removed a chunk and you can do you can remove even tiny tiny little chunks that you just don't want in your sample. So this is excellent for cleaning up stuff and actually would be a lot trickier in a regular audio editor where you'd have to cut it, move it over, crossfade. And so I do like working with this system a lot better in that sense. So we'll go over to copy. Uh, copy, we could select a chunk. Oh, let's use the selection range again. So we can take this note right here and we're going to go copy. And then when we go over to paste, we can paste in a chunk at a certain point. Duplicate is the same sort of idea. I could select a range, hit duplicate, and then it's just going to duplicate that back and forth for me. So then it sounds like this. And then let's go to stretch. Uh, stretch allows you to stretch things out. Let's move on to the next one. Truncate is just shorten. So truncate is a really important one. I use that one a lot. Just gets rid of everything else. So let me undo that. You see whatever my play range is or my selection range, if that is what I've got selected and I hit truncate, it's going to get rid of everything else. So I'll use that one a fair bit. I might even go in and say, all right, let's truncate just the front end of that. And then let's go to selection range and do a little cleanup on that. We'll do a fade in right there. So one, two, three, there's fade in and hit apply. And now we've got a nice little sample. I can do selection range on the end of that as well and do a fade out at the very end. So this is just some of the basic things we can do in the sample editor. That covers most of them. So you know what, I'm just going to reset this and start from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the slice section. So I'm going to click on slice. We've got four different ways that we can slice up audio. So the first way is called detect. And detect looks at the audio that you've got and it looks for something called transients. And transients are just anywhere in the audio where audio goes from close to zero to something loud fairly quickly. So words can be transients, the, the beginnings of drum hits, things like that. And it gets more complicated if you've got a transient that happens while another sound is playing. So that's when things get tricky. If you load in something like a drum loop, it's fairly easy for the software to detect where the beginning of each hit is. What we can do here is crank up the sensitivity or turn down the sensitivity to get more or less slices. So watch what happens as I drag up the sensitivity, we start to see the transients get detected. And now you're starting to see even one right there, which we probably don't want, and then one at the end, which we do want. So let's see what we've got. We can play each one of these uh, slices now. Okay, so that didn't do a great job on this one. And you can hear there's even one slice that's like this. It's nothing. It's just the very beginning, kind of the dead air at the beginning. 
So what we can do is we can go through and edit the slices with the detect mode. A couple things about the detect mode. You see the sensitivity, then next we've got this 0x, and that's just a zero crossings uh, setting so that it's going to put the slices at the point where the audio is starting at zero. So an audio wave kind of goes above and below this center line. So don't worry too much about that. Make sure zero crossings is turned on though. And then you will avoid pops and snaps. And then if I click the next button, we can see the different slices that we've got in here. So we've got seven slices so far, and I can click on each and I can see which slice I'm on. I can see the start and end point of each slice. And the cool thing I could do here is I could go to slice one. Let's look at slice one for a second, which is this kind of useless slice at the beginning. I'm just gonna click remove. And you'll see now I only have six slices, but now we can see if I zoom in a little bit, we can see that this slice does actually start a little bit later. If I want to change that, I can just adjust this start point wherever I want it, maybe like right there. And then I can zoom out a little bit and I can look at what's happening with the end of it. Obviously I don't want that chunk there, so I can just click remove and it will get rid of this slice. Now I only have five slices and here we go. That sounds pretty good. I can adjust the end if I want and not have to worry about my next slice either. But now let's go to the next slice, move over a little bit. Maybe adjust the end of that one, whoops. There we go, adjust the end, go to the next one. That sounds pretty good. We'll have a look at the end. We'll make sure it doesn't go into the next note. And then I've got this, this one here as well. Doo -doo. Okay, so this one I definitely want to have less of the ending in it. So we'll move it over like that. And we need to adjust this ending so it doesn't get into the next note. And then now in our last slice, we need to make that one start a little bit earlier. Right about there. There we go. So I can zoom back out and I've got all of my five slices all perfectly edited here using the detect mode. So last thing about this one is we want to look at this third page and we can see that there's something that says auto on. Mono on here is a great one to leave on in certain situations. Sometimes when I'm editing something like a instrumental sample, I want each pad to cut off each other pad. In other words, if I'm playing some brass thing and I play one note and then I jump to the other note, I don't want to hear that first note as well. I want it to go to the next note and cut off the last one. And so what this mono on will do is it will make sure that all of these pads are set so that they are part of a choke group. So it works great with instrumental things, but you'd want to probably turn that off if you were working with a drum beat because you'd want this, you wouldn't want the snare to cut off the bass drum, or if you had a crash cymbal, you wouldn't want to hit the crash and then have the snare come next and cut off the crash. So make sure you turn that off if you're working with drums. The next one is, says pattern create. And the cool thing about this is once we hit apply and put this onto a group, it will actually put these slices in the order that they were played. So your, if it's something kind of rhythmic and a little bit random, it will drop those in as slices onto your group and you just press play and you can see those individual slices. We'll see that in a moment. And for those of you who's, who've ever used Rex files or uh, Stylus by Omnisphere, it's kind of similar in that regard. And then we've got beats per minute, which we can adjust if we were using a different detect mode. So let's go back and reset that. And we're going to look at the other sampling modes. So I'm gonna page over. So we've got this detect mode, which is probably one of my favorites. But if we go to the next one, we've got split and split will just divide up your sample into chunks. And you either will have four equal slices or eight equal slices, 16 and so on. But let's move on to the next one. Grid now applies more to the tempo, beats per minute, and you can adjust the tempo or you can set it uh, if you know what the tempo was on the loop, you can set it in manually. Let's move on from that one as well and show you the last one, which is manual mode. Another one of my favorite ways of slicing audio up. And this is a neat one. Let me undo all of my slices and watch what happens. If auto snap is on, it's going to make sure my slices adhere to the closest transient. But watch what happens with this one. You hit the first pad 
and all you do is start playing in these slices. So I'm going to go hit those slices at as close to the time as I could get. And now watch what happens. And then, of course, we can go in and, and tweak these ones as well. So I can go to this first slice and go to the second page here if I want, and I can adjust the start and end points of that as well. So I can zoom in again, go over to that first slice, and go to the end, and you'll see how it automatically moves over for me nicely. And then go to the next slice, just play the next slice. Here, that one's a little bit off, so I'll adjust the start time. Adjust the end, make it perfect. Check out the end on this one, it's a little off. Go right, right there. And then this one, adjust the, oops, adjust the start time and the end. And the end goes all the way to the very end. So that's just a different way to slice things up. If you make a mistake as you're going along, you just undo the last slices that you made, try it again, undo, try it again until you get your timing just right, or you use the detect mode. So both of these are, are really nice ways to, to slice things up in this sample editor. Okay, so once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is get these sounds onto the pads. What we need to do is we need to go apply, and we're going to apply this to a pad. You'll see flashing pad number one in the group that we're in, which is C1. And if you just hit OK, it switches to keyboard mode. And now we've got, I found this way kind of restrictive because I wanted to see them as individual samples on individual pads, not as a keyboard instrument that's just kind of playing this sample that we've got sliced up, which we can go back and tweak right here. But what I really wanted was to get these slices onto an individual pad so then I could do things like maybe copy one of the slices and paste it over to another pad. So in order to do that, what you need to do is hit the apply button. You'll see this flashing pad number one. And what you want to do instead is click on the group that you want it on which is our C group, or I could put it onto a new group if I wanted to. But if I hit this C group, now you see that it is flashing. This is very important because now when I hit OK, it chucks the slices onto an individual pad on this group. So check this out. So now when I hit the pad mode button, I can see those individual slices and I could take this one, for example, and go, let's say, what if I wanted to take this sample right here, duplicate it onto this pad? Now what I could do is go to this pad right here. I can hit the plug in or instance button and make sure I'm on sound. And then I can see pitch and gate on page two right here. So I go to page two with these arrow buttons. And then what if I want to take this up? Two semitones like that. So now I've got the ability to take these individual slices, put them on all sorts of pads, maybe apply some pitch shifting to them so I can create something totally different out of it. I can mangle some of these, I could put effects on some and not on others. But this is my favorite way of taking these samples and putting them onto the pads. Remember when I said back in the sampling mode, if we go to this uh, page, right, page three right here, it says pattern create. Let's check out what happened in the software once we hit this apply button to put the sample, when we hit this apply button to put it on this group, look what happened over here. If I get out of this mode, we'll see on each one of our sounds, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, it's put slices down from that original loop. So if I press play, we can see all of those slices have been dropped in and sometimes you don't want that. So sometimes you can just select those notes and just delete them and start from scratch. Or you can use those 
slices and then start tweaking them and do something different with it. So maybe go in and just manually tweak some of the stuff. If you're not very good at playing on the pads, it'll drop it in there for you. And then you can go and manipulate each one of those little slices. So I could do something. I can take this slice and put it back up here. And now we're going to hear this first slice again. So that's working with the pattern that's been created from this loop, from all of those slices, wherever those slices are, they're going to be dropped in now as MIDI information on your sounds, which is brilliant. And here's another cool thing that we can do. Now we've got an individual sample here, an individual sample here, and so on and so forth. I can go in further and start editing each one of these slices. So watch what happens if I click this slice and go to the edit button. Now you can see it's only showing me that I've got a chunk of this entire loop, but you can get a little bit more carried away here if you want. And I can do stuff like truncate this. So let's go to truncate and hit apply and it gets rid of everything else. So why would I want to do that? Well, just because then this is only that sample on this pad and it's a little bit easier for me to go into the selection range and start doing things like applying this fade out at the end of just this one little tiny slice. So I go to uh, truncate and then we'll go to fade, fade out and hit apply. Let's go to this one and I'm going to go back to truncate, hit apply. And I'm going to go to selection range and scroll over and do a fade out on this one. Get rid of that reverb a little bit. And then I go to this one, hit truncate, and then go to selection range, move over and fade out. And then go to this one, truncate, selection range, move this over perfectly where I want that fade out, fade out. And then with this one, I want to go to the selection range and I want to truncate this a little shorter. So it's kind of in line with the other ones. Go truncate. And then I go to selection range, go to the end and do a fade out right there. All right, so now each one of those samples is perfectly edited and I've done fade ins, fade outs, wherever I need them. And you can just really clean up the sound in this, at this point. If you want the audio to be louder, here's where we could do stuff like normalize. We're on fade out right now. Let's go back to normalize. And then now I hit apply and it makes that sample significantly louder. In this case, I don't really need to worry about volume, but if you did, that would be the, uh, a good place to do it. Let's turn on the beat and see what we're at. Let's try chucking in a drum beat just so you can see the difference there. So I'm going to go to group D and I'm going to drop in a drum beat that I've got on my computer, which is just this drum beat from a, a library that I purchased. And we can see the drum loop right here. If I go to the plugin instance, we can see that it's a sampler. So again, if it was an audio module and you didn't want it to be an audio module, just click on the button and go to sampler and hit load. There we go. Sampler. Now I can hit the sampling button and I can start my editing process here. And the same things apply. I'm going to hit the slice button. I'm going to go to page one. Don't forget about these pages. There's a lot of times when you're starting a machine and you're like, what? Where is that slice option? You know, I'm on the slice button. Why can't I see stuff? It's usually because of these pages. So go back to page one and then go to detect. So I'm going to go to detect and check the sensitivity. And you see, as I crank the sensitivity up, we get more and more slices. So there we go. And let's have a listen to this. All right, so that's perfect. So we've got all of these slices mapped out onto the pads. Although, what if I want a slice right there? I can click on this one and watch what happens when I press the split button. It now gives me another sample. That's kind of good. 
There's another one. Let's split that. And now we'll see we're on to the next bank. So if I bank left and right, right here, those are my two banks beyond the regular 16 pads that we've got. So we've got our slices all detected and I can do the same thing. I hit apply and then instead of putting it on just one sound and then going into keyboard mode, that's the problem. I don't want to be on a sound in keyboard mode. I want these slices to go on one entire group. So I make sure I click on the group button so that it flashes. I press OK. Make sure the single is off, by the way. That would just be one of the slices onto a pad. But of course, we want the whole thing. So I press OK. So let's go have a look at what happened. I'm going to press the plug-in button and I'm going to look at my events. I can see that I've got this loop that has been thrown down onto my group. I can see this right here. So that just sliced that up perfectly as eighth notes, which is fine. And it threw this loop down onto our project. So what we can do now is we can go in and, and play around with it. What if I want another bass drum right here? Well, let me just find one that's a, a good bass drum, this first one. I can either option drag this event over so that we have another bass drum right there. Or I could press the E button on the keyboard and just drop in a, a chunk right there. That's the pencil. And I press the E button again and get rid of it. I think it's a pencil or a drumstick, I'm not sure. I think that's probably a good place to stop. It shows you some of the sampling that we can do on different types of loops. I did this on my B flat song. So go back a few videos and check out my B flat song where I recorded sounds in my house that made a B flat. I went into the sample editor and I sliced up everything so that it was nice and clean, got rid of any noise at the beginning or end of the audio files. And that really taught me a ton about the sampler. So I really had to get carried away with it. I'm, I come from a traditional uh, DAW background. So editing with this device was not super comfortable for me at first, but the more I got into it, the faster I got with it and the more fun I have with it. So I just find working with this device is literally like the funnest I've had with music in a very long time. Hopefully you get to the point where you're not frustrated by the technology, but you're kind of set free from it and you're, uh, and you're able to just start creating and creating quickly. I think that's the key is getting to that point and you really just have to discipline yourself to sit down and mess around with it and try the sounds out. I just love working with it and the sampling is one of the most powerful features on this device. But go check out my other videos and hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.